welcome to the Woolly Mammoth Fibre Company podcast. My name is Emma, if you don't know already, and um, I am a natural dyer from Northern Ireland, and uh, I have a lot of knitting to show you today. A lot of finished objects, um, which is unusual for me, I have to say. Rufus is just there if you can hear that noise. And just a couple of whips. Um, and I have a design that is coming out on Friday that I want to share with you. And um, some yarn as well at the end. And I think that's everything. So let's start in chronological order. Um, this is the Lizzie Pinafore. I completed this in I think November or December last year. My last podcast I think was in either November or December. And this was this is a pattern by Gudrun Johnson and the yarn I used is by Marie Wallen and it's her British breeze. So hopefully you can see that. Um I think it's a mix of different British breeds and it is a two ply yarn, I think. Looks like anyway, and worsted spun as far as I can see. Um the colours I used I can't quite remember, but um in my typical autumn colours, this little pinafore, the Lizzie pinafore, is for my little girl. She I think she'll wear it more in the spring. It's not entirely practical in the winter because it's not warm enough with just the top below it. And but it'll be really nice in the spring over leggings and a little top when she doesn't need uh, two jumpers on. <laughs> so um, it has lovely, so it's knit from the bottom up and it has this lovely lace work. And I believe it is based on a pattern that um, Gudrun's mother designed, I think. Um, it was really delightful to make, if I'm being honest. It was just a lovely, lovely little knit and all the colour changes and lace. And this little um, kind of square boat neck made it very, um, very pleasurable to knit. And, um, and the yarn was lovely as well. The only trouble I had with this pattern is at the start of the row, um, it was a yarn over. So what happened was it started to look a little bit weird. And so then what I had to do was to get the nice yarn overs looking proper. There's probably some way of doing this that I don't know, but I moved the stitch or the start through one stitch forward so that I didn't have these funny holes and funny gaps and stuff. So, um, yeah, I'm very pleased with it and it looks very cute, I think. And you'll have seen me make in all of these things I'm talking about if you watch my vlogs, because in them I just kind of show what I'm working on that week. Um, so yeah, this was qu completed quite a long time ago now, so I'm really pleased with it. Um, so that is the Lizzie Pinafore by Goodwin Johnson. Uh, the yarn is Marie Wallen's British Breeds in the colours I don't remember. <laughs> um, next is, ooh, my next finished object is this vest. Hopefully you can see it okay. This is the vest number one by My Favourite Things Knitwear. This was very much a pattern that I had the yarn and I needed to make it work with the pattern that I wanted. So I felt like I was in a bit of a, um, I suppose I normally pick or often I pick the yarn and the pattern at the same time. So I know it's probably gonna work together. Whereas this, I had the yarn and I needed to find something that kind of worked with it. So the yarn for this was Hello Stella Cormo. I only had, I think, three skeins. So um, I was kind of like, okay, I don't think I'm going to have enough to knit what exactly I want. So I used, um, I got some Hello or a long Avic Anna's silk mohair. 
Um, the Hello Stella um, yarn is her Cornwall base in the colorway Shag Rug. And the Hello Avic, or Hello, um, a long Avic Anna colorway Chateen, which apparently means chestnut, I think, in French. So I held two strands of that and one strand of the Cornwall to make it go further and end up with kind of a chunky yarn ish, probably like worsted weight or something like that. And I got gauge with that, so I was really happy and it made a nice fabric. Um, so this vest, this vest was constructed in such an interesting way, um, in my opinion, and it knitted up. I would have had this finished in less than a week if I'd have had um, all the silk mohair I needed. I actually ran out and then I had to order more because I wasn't sure exactly how much I would need. Um, so I ordered more, but if I didn't have to do that, I would definitely have it finished in the week. So it was constructed in a really interesting way that I'd never done before. So it was basically you cast on here and then you, the short rows, obviously I don't want to give the whole pattern away, but I'll just say about the short rows. It wasn't normal short rows. You're basically casting on at the end of rows because you're knitting flat uh, and then you're casting on at the end of the rows and that makes short rows which I had never seen or heard of before which I thought was really cool um, and I learned a new technique while I'm knitting this um, I learned how to pick up stitches from the middle of the stitch below rather than the two legs of the stitch which makes a seamless join I don't know if you can see that there but this is where I picked up stitches and it's totally invisible, which is actually amazing. So I'm really pleased with how this turned out. It's a really nice um, vest. It was a real, it felt like a nice palette cleanser, to be honest, because it went very fast and it goes with lots of things in my wardrobe, like these cords. <laughs> and you can wear a lot of colors below this vest, apart from the one that I'm wearing, <laughs> probably. Um, and yeah the fabric's really cozy and it turned out really nice and the whole finish is very neat and tidy and um, oh and another thing is this is um the tubular bind off i didn't realize the italian bind off and the tubular bind off were the same thing until i looked them both up on youtube but they're the same thing and i found a good tutorial by chili dog um explaining how to do tubular bind off one by one ribbon so that you don't have to rearrange the stitches which I really liked and yeah because obviously there's quite a lot of tubular bind off along all the arms and the bottom but I really feel it was worth the effort it took me like a whole evening I think to cast off the bottom but it's well worth it all right on to the next item on the agenda So the next item on the agenda, my next finished object, is this berry by Albina McLaughlin. Um, one day Albina came to my house and I instantly said, oh my goodness, your berry is so cool, can I try it on? And she was like, yes, of course. So I tried it on and I was like, that looks really cool. Like I'd never think to wear a beret. I've never worn a beret in my life. Um, I just didn't think it would, I would sit it or something. So I tried it on, I was like, oh, that's really cool. I was definitely inspired by how she was wearing it and she had a really cool outfit on that day. And um, I just thought, yeah, I, I could pull this off potentially. So I had a new yarn. I have a new yarn coming to the shop. It's going to be launched next month in March. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to um, knit the beret in the new yarn. So this is the Stock and Pit Beret by Albina McLaughlin. I'll put it on for you. There's a lot of ways you can wear this. And um, the yarn is a mix of Swartblaze and Blue Texel. I held it double to give like a DK kind of weight and to give a little bit of stiffness to the beret. You don't want it to be too floppy. 
It's a woolen spun yarn, so it suits this perfectly, I feel. And this is a local to me fiber. Um, it's just from down the road and it's naturally colored. So I haven't dyed this. I would describe the color as um, dark gray. It's like a mixture of dark gray, dark brown. I wouldn't, it's not like a true black by any stretch of the imagination, but there's definitely like wee bits of light gray in it, as you can see, all flecked throughout, which makes for a beautiful yarn. So the beret, you start from the stock and you increase out and um, you finish, what would this be called? The hem of the hat. <laughs> um, so I'll just put it on and show you different ways you can wear it. So the way I like wearing it is I like to tuck this in and put it on like this. I think it looks kind of cool. I don't know if this looks cool. I've not, like, I cannot see what I'm recording. So I, this could look totally daft. So you can wear it like this. You could obviously like probably just wear it like, you know, with the hem out, you know, like that. Or you could wear it, if it's really cold, you could wear it totally pulled down over your ears, which is less of a good look, I feel. <laughs> it kind of almost has to be sitting off your head a bit to look right. And um, I really, really enjoyed making this. This was a very fast make. I probably made it in like five evenings because I held the yarn double, so it went quite fast. And um, yeah, I, it's knit on Magic Look, which was interesting. I wouldn't naturally gravitate towards Magic Look, but because it's quite like a small project, um, it was really interesting to knit it on Magic Look. And the pattern is actually written, you know, with Magic Look, like that is how it's written. So um, wasn't difficult. It was very interesting and I think the yarn sits it really well. I also think this yarn would be good for any garment. I should have brought a skein of it down. I'll try and insert a little bit of a video of it here um, or some photos. But yeah, so if you want, it'd be perfect for a garment, I think as well. And you could hold it double really easily to get a DK weight. Um, and it holds together really nicely. The fibers mesh together really, really well. So you can't notice that it's, um, held together at all and whenever I wear it I feel like somewhere between like uh, like a French a French artist or like some sort of like renegade like public like a political renegade or I feel like a, a sort of farmer maybe sometimes too <laughs> it has a lot of different vibes about it that you can you can definitely yeah, there's a lot of different angles you could take when you're wearing that sort of thing. So hopefully you can see that. So that is my Stock and Pip Beret by Albina McLaughlin. I'll leave links to all these patterns um, in the description box. Um, so this is that. My next finished object is my vest. So this is another pattern by Albina McLaughlin. This was, um, Albina is uh, a local designer to me. So we work together quite a lot on things. Um, anyway, back to the vest. This is called the Cutting Edge Vest and I use two strands of my um, hearth sock yarn. So I held them double. And um, this is a staked vest. I know, right? So it's knit in a tube, basically. It's knit in a tube from the top down. And then you steak, steak, steak. So that was an experience. If you want to see me staking this vest, you can watch my previous vlog. I had only staked one item 
before that and it went a little bit wrong because I, I don't know why it went wrong, but it did and I had to fix it and it, it came good in the end, but um, this for me definitely worked a lot better and I was very confident going into it that it would work and it did and I followed the instructions exactly. So what I really liked about this pattern is there's different options. There's different neckline options, there's different hem options and there's different um, shaping options. So you can basically customise it, which is really cool. So I chose, this is called the clean neckline. You can also do one where it's like ribbed or you can do like a shawl collar. Then for the body, I did an A-line bodice. You can do also straight or you can do, I think those are the two options for that. And then for the hem, you can do a split hem or a continuous hem. I was going to do a split hem, but then when it came to it, I decided I just wanted, I would just rather knit a normal hem. So that's what I did. Um, I was going to attempt to do the tubular cast off on this. However, when I started to do it, I realised it was going to be different than for the one by one rib. And I couldn't figure out how to do it. And I looked up a few tutorials and then eventually I just started Googling like um, elastic cast offs. And then I was going down a rabbit hole. So I decided just to go up a needle size and cast off in pattern um, knit two, purl two. And that always gives me enough stretch if I do that for like, if it says do an elastic bind off, that's what I usually always do. So I need to figure out how to do tubular bind off two by two rib in the round without having to rearrange stitches. <laughs> so I'm really, really pleased with how this turned out. The only modifications I made were um, knitting the body shorter because I'm quite short in the body and um, other than that I did exactly what it said use an iron to block um, the vest and it just really helps to make the vest sit properly I don't know if I stand up if you'll be able to see it probably not if I go like this but it just sits in a really nice way so it has a really nice detail here at the shoulder and just here I feel like it's really seamless in how it um, comes together and so you just sew down the steaked edge and this yarn is stickable um, as Albina um, designed it in the horse sock held double so really enjoyed this pattern, I have to say. I learned a lot of new skills when doing it as well, with the sticking and um, how to use an iron to block. And yeah, I think when I was knitting it, I thought, oh no, this V is very deep. Um, of Because of course you can't try it on when it's knit in a tube. So I had to just trust the pattern, trust that I got the right gauge. Um, oh, I need to talk about that as well. And I was so relieved when I cut it and tried it on and sewed it down. It just fit it so well with just like the right amount of ease and just, it was perfect. I actually think it fits in terms of how it sits on the body. It sits a lot better than the vest number one. Um, I don't know why. I think it sits, especially around the shoulder, it sits very well and it's not quite as wide. So that's maybe why. Um, a note about gauge. So yes, in the pattern, I think it says it uses three skeins of the hearth sock. However, I did, um, I have yet to check my garment gauge compared to my swatch gauge, but I did have to break into the fourth skein, basically for the bind off and for reinforcing around the edges, which, you know, I could have done a couple of rows less on the ribbon and not had to do that, but I just decided to do it because I just thought I would it would feel better to have it about a few, you know, a few couple of rows longer. So I probably wouldn't have done that if I was, you know, having to buy yarn specifically for the pattern, but because I took it from my shop and I had the four schemes sitting for myself that I had reserved, 
I just thought, well, I'm going to use them for that. And then my leftover, I might knit another stock and pit berry and I could potentially give it as a present to someone. Um, because I would like to try the stock and pit berry with my hearth DK and the hearth sock held together. It was Albina who suggested holding two kind of thicker yarns together so that the hat could be knit really fast and it would give it more structure and stiffness with the thicker fabric. So that is all my finished objects. I'll maybe at this point sh chat a little bit about my design that's releasing on Friday which is the 17th of February. Many, many of you know how long this design has been on the go. Probably two to three years, probably more like three years if I'm being honest. This is the third one that I've knitted on it. I had lots of problems along the way because I am not good at maths. I am not good at designing or anything like that. So I had help from friends and um, I eventually got the pattern correct. I had a great tech editor who um, checked my pattern for me and I had a lovely group of testers who were great. So this is the Fernie Corner Shawl, my first ever design. And I'm super pleased with it. It has, I have been wearing this, so it's probably not as pristine as it could be at this point. And it's called the Ferny Corner Shawl because of these little fronds here that come out. And um, you start with a garter tab here and you increase it, increase it, increase, and then you do the lace section. And then it finishes off with a nice little pico bind off. And um, this is knit in my BFL Gotland base, which I've got in especially for the release of the pattern on Friday. So I will have yarn kits um, for sale on Friday, this Friday, the 17th at 8pm GMT on my website. And then the pattern will be for sale from the morning time of Friday. I don't have a specific time, but I'm just going to do it in the morning launch it on Ravelry, launch it on my website. Uh, so you can have a look at the pattern specifications before you purchase any yarn. If you want to purchase mine or anyone else's or whatever. So what have I got to say about this? A note on gauge, we're all about gauge today. So in my pattern, it says you need two skeins of the main color and one skein of the contrast color. However, the kits that I will be selling will have only one skein of the main colour and one skein of the contrast colour. That is because typically in knitting patterns there's a 10% a ten percent buffer, um, you know, there's a 10% buffer, you know, if you're very close to needing a second skein but you don't need it, you add in the 10% buffer and um, just in case you run out of yarn. But I didn't want to make kits that people had a whole skein basically left over from. So I made the skein or I made the kits of one colour of each. There's a whole pile of different colours. And then I've just put up extra skeins of the main colour, this undyed colour in my shop. So if you do need one, you can buy it. And if you don't, great. If you knit to gauge, you should be able to do it in one skein. I think I had one gram one to two grams left over, which is not much at all. So it was definitely yarn chicken, but there's no point in getting the third skein if you don't need it. So I'm just gonna leave it up to you if you wanna go for one skein of the main color or two. And um, yeah, those kits will be coming to the shop on Friday. So it's triangular, but also kind of not triangular because, well, I would say it's triangular to be fair. It's quite long. The wingspan is like two meters, 13 centimeters or something, I think. And it's knitted on like a 4.5 millimeter needle. So it's quite drapey and just really floaty and light feeling, which I love. And you can wear it like, 
in the normal shawl way, just over your shoulders, like this. Or you could wear it. This is how I always wear shawls, like if I'm going out somewhere. You know, just like that with a coat. Um, so you can see the nice lace work, or you could wear it, you know, off the shoulder or whatever. So I'm really, really pleased with this. I put a lot of effort into the photography. Um, I'll insert some photos here. You, you might have already seen them if you watch my vlogs. Uh, a lot of effort into the design, the layout of the pattern, and um, there's even a little poem in there. And yes, I'm super excited to see what happens with my first um, pattern release. And it was so nice to see the testers knitting up samples of it. Like that was such a good feeling and I can't wait to see other people doing that if anyone buys it. <laughs> um, so the BFL Gotland base is a four ply base. So you could, for example, if you definitely didn't want to go in to, um, it's 350 meters per hundred grams. So if you were to use a typical finger and weight yarn, um, at 400 meters per hundred grams, you would definitely have enough yarn. So for example, my natural sock yarn, you would just need the two skeins. You wouldn't need the third skein. Um, but I chose this yarn because I felt it's nice and soft. It has that bit of, um, like all the wee hairs trap the air and it just feels very drapey and nice. And um, whereas the natural sock yarn is more, it's spun more, it's spun a bit harder like and it's with a higher twist because it's for socks but you definitely could use it um my testers used it and i think they liked it um so if you're wanting to choose another yarn for it i would say choose something that is worsted spun oh it could be really nice in a woolen spun yarn as well but worsted spun for the drape potentially but yeah could be really nice in woolen spun too um something like a two ply not too high a twist um just to give it that drape um i think would work really well i think i'll do kits with the natural sock next month in march in case you prefer that but i didn't get it done in time for this friday so that is the ferny corner shawl my first ever design <laughs> now works in progress just looking up my notes there. Just gonna check, we're still recording. Yes, still recording. Okay, so, works in progress. You might recognize this yarn <laughs> from um, my vest number one, but I decided to cast on the Classic Garter Jumper Like Kids by Kat and Lenny. This is not a designer I've heard of, but I just searched on Ravelry for what I was looking for and find this and I thought, yeah, that would be perfect. And um, I managed to get gauge with one strand of the mohair, which means I'm probably gonna have enough left to complete this project without having to buy any more, which is great because I am keeping a track of my stash this year skeins in, skeins out, skeins from the shop, what I'm knitting. Um, so that's great because I, I'm using up what I have. So this again is for my little girl. Um, we could be matching, wouldn't that be cute? Maybe it's a bit much, a bit too sound of music. <laughs> um, but this is just, um, this is the back actually. It's just knit in garter and um, yeah, I just think it's going to be a really nice knit. Um, I had to go down a full needle size from four to three to get gauge because I'm a loose knitter. So it'll probably feel like it takes longer than it should. But I think it'll be really cozy when it's finished. And um, hopefully she likes it. I'll show you a picture of it. This picture of it there. Just like a classic little jumper and garter stitch. 
So that's one work in progress. The next work in progress, you won't have seen this. I cast this on after the last podcast is this crocheted blanket for a little baby that will be coming into this world in July. Um, my little niece or nephew. So I decided that I wanted to use up certain yarns in my stash and I did have a fair amount of Let Lopey left. So I gathered together all my Let Lopey leftovers from projects and started to um, crochet them into this blanket. I'm not a very good crocheter. I can really just do the basics. I don't even know what this stitch is called. I think it's trebles or doubles or something like that. I can't even tell you how many <laughs> how many stitches I cast on because I didn't count. I just count it in multiples of three until it looked right. Um, I had quite a lot of white, so I decided that I had to sort of bulk it out with white. Now I've knitted or crocheted quite a lot of these before, um, and I've done them all a wee bit wider than this. Um, unfortunately, I am basically running out of yarn. I've only got white left. Um, so I don't know what way I'm going to be able to finish this. Um, so we will see what happens. I have had a lot of you offer to send me scraps and stuff, which is so nice. So I think there's one or two of you sending me things. So um, that will finish off this blanket and I can really use any scraps. There's been a lot of places where I started a row, didn't have enough to finish it and just used another color and it looks completely fine. Like there, start it with the rust and end it. If you can see that, start it with the rust and end it with the red. But yes, basically these are like little blankets for like car seats and stuff like that. And the cool thing is like, you can always add to them, I guess, um, if you want to um, in, in later years, if you want to make them bigger. Um, any ones I've made so far, I haven't put an edging on because then that kind of constricts you as to how, you know, if you want to add more to it or whatever. But this has just been a really nice, there's no pattern by the way, I'm just following YouTube tutorials, how to cast on in crochet, how to knit or how to crochet a blanket. I'm just following the tutorials. It's been a real palette cleanser. It's, just very nice. I had kind of a little thing going when I had plenty of yarn. I would knit like two rows a day before I'd start my knitting. And it just got me into a real nice relaxing state of mind and a nice, I just really enjoyed doing it. So I would like to learn a few more crochet techniques. I think I mentioned this in a podcast. I would like to have a go at granny squares for some other scraps. Um, and make some blankets that way, maybe holding yarn double, like finger and weight yarn double, because this is obviously like DK to iron weight, I think. I The hook size I'm using is four millimeters, and that works really well for me. I'm quite a loose, I'm an even looser crocheter than I am knitter. Um, uh, well, I think I am, seems like I am. So as soon as I get the last bits of yarn from the people who are sending it to me, I can finish this and have it ready as a little present. Um, after I finish this, I'm going to cast on another one because there's another baby coming into my life. who is kind of a relation, but kind of not exactly. Um, and I'm going to choose different colors for that. So I will just go and get them and show them to you now. So this is my next basket of yarn that I'm going to be starting the same type of blanket with. Um, and I'm going to show you what I'm going to knit. Or, I keep saying knit for crochet. Um, this is one of the limited edition bases from my shop. I can't remember which one. Looks like Swartless, the Swartless one that I had a few months ago, possibly, or it could be one before that as well. It's very similar to my sport glue and blue textile. Maybe just very, very slightly darker and very slightly brighter. So you could definitely knit 
a Fernie Corner shawl in the limited edition yarn. That would look amazing. I might actually do that myself just to see what it looks like. I've got some Cosway yarn in the shop that you can mix up the colours with if you want it to as well, which could be really cool. But you just need to double check the meterage to see because they're all like a little bit different to see if you'd have enough. So, um, so for this blanket, I am using um, Jameson's double knitting. All my scraps of that, I have a lot of wee balls of that, lots of scraps of that. I got some of this lovely Manx Lofton a long time ago that my dad got when he was in the Isle of Man for me. I started to knit swatch with it and I just decided that that is not what this yarn was for, so I wound up again. So basically with this, this one, this blanket I'm going for is basically loads of like woolly local breeze and mainly monochrome but like with a bit of colour so mostly naturally naturally coloured this is I think I got this in this is North Ronaldsay sheep this is from the sheep fold I got it in the Lake district I think this is DK way again the four ply ones I'll just hold them double for those rows and here is another one not going to do wool mill Scotland and this is their North Country Hill Cheviot. I got this at Edinburgh Yarn Festival a long time ago. And then I have all of these. So I'll probably not put the brown directly beside the purple, but I think it will all look really nice together. I might add in another color. I have a few really nice skeins from um, Marina Skew, Naturally Dyed, that I'll hold double. There's one, a green one. I think it would look really nice in this that she gave me. And this one is Herdwick and Shetland. So I'm going to put this, this is going to be a beautiful tapestry of local kind of wools, British wools, fancy breeds, rare breeds, that sort of thing. And here's another one from the sheepfold. It is Borare. Um, this is iron weight, but I think it'll be fine. Don't think it'll be that different. Has a lovely colour, doesn't it? The border eye. Like all these beautiful colours and then just like interspersed with the lovely Heather Jameson's colours. And I think that's all, all the different yarns I'm going to put in. But I think it's going to look really nice. I think I definitely need like one more like colour to add to this. A green one, I think. I think Marina's green one will be really nice. Possibly a very light yellow could look nice and very nice summery springy don't know it would kind of like the darkness and the heaviness of the darker colors i think it would look really good so the next thing i have to do for this um start winding up the skeins that's going to be quite a big job i think um because there's quite a lot of skeins to wind well not too many three or four and i'll probably start that and possibly finish it before the next podcast is out that is the one thing about crochet, it does seem to be very fast compared to knitting. So that's it's really satisfying to see something working up so fast. Lastly, the next thing I'm going to finish, and I actually am going to finish it, I said I would pick it up after I finish my cutting edge vest, is my first sweater by Hive Knits. You've probably seen this like a gazillion times. <laughs> so basically, in the last podcast, I think I showed this. I tried it on and everything, um, but the sleeves are too short for balloon sleeves. So what I need to do is rip the cuffs back, both of the cuffs. Thankfully, I didn't cast off because that would be so annoying. Um, I've started doing that more now. If I don't know if something's the right length, I just don't cast it off, which is good, I think. So I'm going to rip back the cuffs. Um, I can't remember what needle size I was using for this, so it's going to be a bit interesting, I think. Rip back, knit about two inches, maybe two and a half, knit the cuffs again, and then I'll be finished. And I am so excited to wear this. It's going to be so cozy um, with its doubled over neckband and the fisherman's rib. I just think it's going to go with everything. It's just like a really versatile colour. So yeah, there's the colour difference. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. But it is actually quite different. Like it's a lot lighter this next base that's coming next month. 
than the pure, I think it was this Swarbles. Only Swarbles on its own. I can't quite remember. My memory's not great. <laughs> um, I have a lot of yarns coming in and out of the shop. And um, so I definitely could wear these together because they're, I think they're different enough that you can do that. So I do have some yarns to show you that's coming to the shop next week. So next Thursday, I'm having a regular shop update. Um, I will have a good amount of stuff. So first of all, this Friday, I'll be having kits for the Ferny Corner Shawl. I'll put all the colors in here, just in case you want to see them. Um, these are just two of them. This one is called Winter Bracken and this one is called Shady Forest. Um, I will also have, no, that's all I'll have in this Friday's update, just yarn kits. Next Thursday, which is the 20, what day is next Thursday? I have no idea, I'll put it on the screen and I'll put the time on as well. Um, I am going to have a regular shop update. So in the shop update, I will have Hearth DK, loads of sweater quantities. You could use that to make one of these vests. I think that would work really nicely, actually. I was considering doing that um, and then I didn't. I just used the Hearth Sock Double, but I think it could be, I think it could be really good for one of these vests, actually. Um, so the Hearth DK is 50% Jago, 50% BFL. And it's 240 meters per 100 grams. It's worsted it spun and it's a two ply uh, yarn or a two fold yarn. Um, have it's all quite muted because it's the base itself is like a grey brown. It's like a mid grey brown. So when you dye on top of it, you get really nice colors. Um, and I have everything from blue to rust to like a scarlet, I think. I have purples and dusky pinks and mustard greens and all sorts of colors. So if you wanna see more about that, you can just watch my vlogs or follow me on Instagram and I have stuff up there. So we'll have loads and loads of Heart DK. Basically, I was supposed to do an update in January and I wasn't able to because of the postage situation here. It has resolved itself now. Things are moving along quite slowly, but things are moving as normal, um, I would say, most, for, most, for the most part anyway. So there's that. Um, here is an indigo dyed heart decay, similar color to this. Um, I will also have my heart sock base. This is bonfire, this is cognac, which you could use to make this. Um, I don't no, there's not enough in this. You would need three skeins of this to do your ferny corner shawl, but um, you could still do it. I think it could be really cool. Um, but I'd personally probably rather go for a yarn with less of a high twist. Although I would be very curious to see what it's like knitted in this. So yes. There'll be lots of hearth sock in lots of colours and this is a no nylon sock yarn. It's the same as the DK weight, 50% check of 50% BFL and it's a little bit of a thicker sock yarn. It's 330 metres per 100 grams and it's naturally dyed by me here in Northern Ireland. So that's on next week's shop update along with a little bit of natural sock. A few of you will have seen this in my vlogs. This is the Vintage Polly mini skein set inspired by one of my Polly pockets when I was wee. Just some really nice colours. You could do like a really nice gradient lace. Like you could probably do a really nice um, Lizzie pinafore in this. So I'll have that mini skein set and I'll also have this sock set, which is called Here Comes the Sun sock set. This is um, my natural sock along with the mini skein set there. It's on my natural sock base, which is 50% Chivia, 50% BFL uh, with a high twist, no nylon for socks. Now I would say, and I always say this when using um, a sock yarn without nylon, knit it as tight as you can and make the foot longer than it needs to be so that when it felts, because it most likely will felt if you've got feet like mine that are very sweaty, 
it will felt and when it felts, it will be the perfect size. So that is my advice for no nylon socks. Um, yeah, so we'll have this sock set along with other skeins of natural sock. And um, that's all coming next week. Now, is that everything? I don't think I have anything else to share. This is probably going to be a very long episode, even though I feel like I've raced through everything. But I think that's everything I have to share. I really hope you enjoyed this episode. The fire's almost out. I need to put another stick in the fire. And thanks for everyone who followed along since my last episode and since Vlogmas. Um, it was really nice to see some new um, people popping up in my subscriptions feed. Um, yeah, it's just really nice and I do enjoy reading all your comments. Um, I don't always get to reply to them all, but some of them I do. And you always have great suggestions for stuff. In my last vlog I was talking about Sardo and how I'd like to make it and um, loads of you had amazing suggestions for tutorials or said that you had a tutorial. And one day I will definitely like to give it a go. The only thing I will say about this Ardo in this house is it's so cold. I just don't know. I just don't know if it, the proof would work. So if you have any suggestions for that, I'm all ears. So I'd say the next podcast will probably be inside by the fire. And then after that, we might move out to the greenhouse. Um, if you don't watch my vlogs, a lot of my vlogs are just like daily life. What's going on in the house? Um, in the summer, it's about what goes on in the garden a lot, what I'm knitting, um, a little bit of chatter about that as the week goes along. They're mostly weekly vlogs. And I also go on a lot of walks, so I take you along walks on the north coast of Northern Ireland. Um, some beautiful scenery and our lovely local, um, our lovely local different spots along the north coast. So... Hope you enjoyed that episode and hopefully I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. See you see you see you later. Bye.